pink bands in the image. They're, they're rays of sunlight reflecting off Voyager because sun, even though nearly four billion miles away, was in view. And it just so happened that suspended in one of the beams of sunlight was a tiny little speck. Do you see it? Yeah. For you guys in the cheap seats, I'll blow it up just a tad for you. It's, it's, it's there. If you're still not with me, it's right there. I don't want anyone to miss it. And we can just go back to the, the big shot for a second. It's a picture of Earth from 3.7 billion miles away. And it just so happened to be caught in a ray of light. And one famous astronomer of the day said of it, just remarking that everyone who's ever lived their lives lived them out on that tiny pale blue dot that he called a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. I don't know about you, when I first saw it, a shrinking feeling came over me. And I knew in that moment that my life was a tiny little blip on the radar of history, a vapor, infinitesimal little life. You say, well, Louis, you're, you're making me feel small. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to make you feel small. I'm trying to help you see that you are small. But it's significant insignificance. Because as tiny as we are, we are known and prized by majesty who sent for us and loves us and knows us even though we are teeny tiny little bitty people on a little bitty speck floating through the vast cosmos that he has made. Just like he could name every star as he called them into being and put them in their places. He could start in this building tonight all the way up in the top with you right there. And he could call you by your name. And he could move to you and call you by your name and you by your name. And the great creator of all the heavens and the earth could move through this auditorium and call every single person in this building by name tonight. He knows us and is aware of us and loves us and has come to invite us into a relationship with him that will never ever end it's amazing when you think about it when you think about how big he is that we know his name I want to take you on a quick journey outward if you're up for it I think you guys are tonight um, Houston would be like kind of the home of the space program by the way um, at least one of the key centers and so I want to take you out a little bit um, we're going to go 93 mi million miles out from that little pale blue dot to our near star, our sun, which is what we call it. We're not sure what God calls it. He named it, but we call it the sun. You know it. Um, it burns you up. You're around here. You get it. Um, by the way, nice day here in Houston. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got outside. You get 16 of those a year here in Houston, so I hope you loved every minute of it. You understand probably more than the other cities that we're gonna be going to about the sun. It's a raging ball of fire, people. It is not just up there, you know, nice and happy, smiley face coming up, you know, as we used to draw it as kids. It is 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface. It is raging intensity. It is like billions of nuclear bombs going off every second. So strong, it's sending light out at 186,000 miles a second. It only takes the beam of light eight minutes to cover the 93 million mile journey journey from the sun to your skin in Houston, Texas. And it came out of the mouth of God. We cannot think that he is some kind of mamby-pamby God, some kind of mealy little weak God. He is ferocious, this God we are worshiping tonight. He is intense in power and holiness and radiant splendor and might. And he opens his mouth and things like that just come out of his mouth. We got to remember that tonight. That's who we're worshiping. It's 100 times the diameter of Earth. In case you don't know how big that is, take a look. This gives you a little perspective on us. And that's why tonight when you go to sleep, you want to thank God that we're 93 million miles away from the sun.
This next image comes to us from the Swedish Solar Institute. They're doing close-up studies of the surface of the sun, and that's what you get. It's raging fire. Scientists say it would take the gross national product of the United States of America for seven million years for your local power company to run the sun for one second. And it's just one of the billions of stars in our subdivision called the Milky Way, which is one subdivision among hundreds of billions of subdivisions in the known universe that God has made. He's big. Go out a little ways. Let's use that ruler we talked about, okay? The light year, you remember? 5.88 trillion miles. Let's use that and go out. We're just 93 million miles here. That's nothing. Let's take some strides. 440 light years out. We come to this beautiful constellation called Pleiades. I just put this one in because it's so beautiful. And because it's mentioned many times in scripture, in the Old Testament books, the prophets, and in Job, Job's having that conversation with God and God's trying to remind him that he's the one that's big and Job is the one that's small. And he says to Job, Job, can you hold the Pleiades in your hand? To which Job looks up and says, no. And God's like, well, there. One place in the scripture, it says that God measures the universe in the span of his hand. The whole universe. <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's about right there. Let's go out a little further. There's so many amazing things. We're gonna go a thousand light years out to the Vela Pulsar. Check this out. This is absolutely stunning. Isn't that cool? Well, it's probably more than cool. It's um, hot, but it's interesting and amazing. You say, well, what's a pulsar? Um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't have a degree in astronomy, okay? Um, a star explodes into a supernova, can collapse back on itself into a magnetic intensity. Now, this is a highly magnetized neutron star. It's oscillating 11 times a second, the center of it. And it's, it's huge, by the way. I love it because it looks like double bow and arrow shooting an arrow out, but it's sending out this intense signal out. And not only is it beautiful to look at, thousand light years away from us, but we aimed a radio telescope at the Vela Pulsar. That's what we're using to see if there are other people out there trying to talk to us. And uh, we aimed it at the Vela Pulsar. And this is what we got back from the Vela Pulsar. This is what that thing sounds like right there. It just does that all day and all night. I, I don't know Morse code, but it could be tapping out. No, he's big. He's really, really big. He's a whole lot bigger than you think he is. He's really, really big, this God we worship. He's really, really, really big and a whole lot bigger than you think he is. Didn't want to miss out on the worship. Didn't want to miss out. All creation was glorifying God. And the Bella Paul Star said, all right, here we go. Now let's jump 8,000 light years out. This is the Hourglass Nebula. Yeah, that's, I think God just put that one up there for fun. It's a dying star emitting tons of gases that are cooling and creating this beautiful thing. The star that's dying is not the one you see to the left, but the one right in the center of the eyeball. I don't know about you, when I was growing up, the ultimate trump in my house was my mom saying, well, you better watch out and be careful because God is watching you. Well, it turns out she was right after all. God sees everything and knows everything. He can't see you with the hourglass nebula. He may see you with um, the 